This is Twit. All right, so let's talk about something we can remember. <laughs> <laughs> this week, Apple was busy with their big annual WWDC conference, and it looks like Apple users must have been a little jealous of those developers over on Windows. So, you know, for, for several years now, Windows developers have had the ability ability to run Linux and essentially a well-integrated virtual machine called WSL, or Windows Subsystem for Linux. While those poor Apple developers, you know, they did get to use Mac OS's ZSH or Z Shell command line was built right in, or, or they could even switch to Bash if they wanted. And you know what? Although it's it was very close to Linux, Linux like it, it wasn't exactly Linux. You know, try developing a Linux app or running an actual Linux app on Mac OS command line, and well, maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. Who knows? But the tool, uh, well, this week Apple released an initial build of its new open source container tool for creating and running Linux containers on Mac OS. The tool is called Wait for it, Container. Creative, <laughs> creative, like always, Apple. Beautiful. Good job, good job with that one. And is written in Apple's beloved Swift language. But even though it is called container, this tool actually creates an isolated, lightweight Linux virtual machine with some strict, strictly enforced security around it. And even though Linux is ran in an isolated VM, uh, the containers within that are still OCI or Open Container Initiative compliant, compliant, meaning you should be able to push and pull uh, containers uh, from other systems such as Docker, you know, run a Docker container in this or or create a container in this and run it over in Docker. You should be able to use them interchangeably if, if they do continue to follow that standard appropriately. Uh, one other difference in these uh, VMs uh, used... They used a streamlined Swift based init system called VM init. Unlike a standard Linux init system, VM init includes no core utilities, dynamic libraries, libc, but does do the usual stuff like uh, environment setup, IP assigning, file system mounting, etc. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. It's um, it's a different thing, but. Uh, and so, you know, although some of the technology used is a bit different than what my, or Windows, Microsoft, is using, uh, the use case and functionality seems pretty similar to me. You know, it's a developer's conference. It's for developers, kind of like Windows was thinking with their WSL. So I think it's safe to call this MSL, or Mac OS Subsystem for Linux. So once again, I'd like to uh, thank Apple for inventing, you know, something new for us, for the developers out there in the world. Bravery and courage and all of that. It's yeah, I, I think we should call it WSL for Mac OS. <laughs> it's even better. It was uh, what I immediately thought of when I saw that they did this. It's like, oh, they they did the they did the Windows thing. Oh, um, what are they getting out of it? Uh, less annoyance by all the developers that have to do stuff with Linux Docker containers. Is one of the big things. I mean, um, same same thing. Microsoft got well, running Linux. There, I put a, sh a second link in the show notes as well as posting it into the Discord chat. It's got a, a table that give, compares the features between Docker's desktop and the Apple container. Mm -hmm. Now you realize with the Apple container, you're going to need a dedicated Linux kernel per container. It's for its virtual machine, yeah. Yeah, Whereas with the uh, Docker, you can have use a single single Linux kernel for all the, your containers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, quite often uh, containers you're using the kernel from the host, where the host here yep. is Apple. So yep, they're doing it a little yeah. differently. So if you're do you take advantage of uh, Apple's container, it's going to be deeply Mac OS native and Swift centric. Whereas if you use the Docker system, it's going to be cross platform and container focused. Yeah, I think I think the idea is that any of your Linux based Docker containers are going to work there. Just some yep. of the tooling around it, I'm sure will be different. I want to see somebody take the uh, sick codes Docker OS X container and run it. <laughs> run, run Mac OS inside of Mac OS. That'd be fun. Uh, now I'm going to 
looking at Bobby Borisov's uh, article, he feels that uh, Docker still offers uh, way more flexibility and capable capabilities oh, sure. than Apple's new product. Yeah, I'm sure there's I'm sure there's actually a laundry list, and people will discover sure. this as they start fiddling with it. But I'm sure there is quite the list of stuff that just won't work for one reason or another. <laughs> and I, you know, I'd, passing through networks, passing through USB devices, all kinds I of would, stuff. I would say it does right now, but think about you know if they kind of go the same path that Windows went with WSL. You know, if they tie that into the system, get the integrations there, so it could be more seamless with the Mac OS system. But maybe then, maybe. then do we call it WSL2 for Mac OS, or do we call it <laughs> WS, WSL for Mac OS 2? MSL2. MSL2? Yeah, there you go. And I've got a, I've got the same question Bobby Borisov has. Why is Apple putting all this effort into creating this? Uh, they've, they've gotten complaints from developers, yeah. or the internally their developers want to do. Well, it's got to be one or the other. Same reason Microsoft did it, you know, they they want develop, you know, the old, whatever his name was, developers, developers, mm -hmm. de developers, you know, if Balmer, yeah, hey, Balmer, there we go. You know, if, yes. everybody, if, if, if all the developers like developers all over the world are using Linux one way or another, mm -hmm. Windows doesn't want those developers to just leave and just say, well, you know, if you're not going to help me, here, I'm just going to go full time Linux, Mac, Mac, Apple, Apple doesn't want their developers to transition away to full-time Linux away from their stuff either. So if they give them these tools and options that, so they can use Linux mm -hmm. within their ecosystem without leaving it, you know, it, it helps them keep those developers with them. For those developers that can afford to buy them, <laughs> Apple Macintosh. Yes. I mean, yeah, they're already, it's, it's, it's going to be targeting Mac users already, obviously. Yeah, there were some there were some other interesting things at WWDC. There is, of course, the uh, the the glassy OS, the I forget what they call it now, but the, you know, the accessibility nightmare, the, the one where, you know, in some of the slides they showed on the platform, you couldn't read the words because it was like <laughs> white text and clear bubbles on a white back, bright background. It's like, what is I can't read it. What does it say? Um one of the other interesting things is like on the iPad, they are making it a little bit more of a Mac OS sort of experience with windows and thing, you know, being able to do multiple things at the same time. Um, now what I've not seen is whether you can actually run like full on X code or VS code on your, um, on your iPad yet. Uh, you know, I, I don't think they've unlocked it to the point of where you're going to be able to put Asahi on it. So it's not there yet. They need, need, need to, uh, Turn down the uh, um, uh, the obsessive control knob some more on on the iOS stuff, but you, you know if, if Apple wants to get a little more Linux friendly here, you know, if, since, since they don't at least they say they don't have all the telemetry that the other you know OSs have out there, mm -hmm. then really they're making the money on their hardware, and and they should not care a whole lot about the what. OS you're running on there, except for the ecosystem tie-in. Okay, that's there. But you know, why not throw a bone to the uh the, the types of like Asahi and, and help them out a little too? <laughs> yeah. I would I would really love to see official Asahi support for the uh the iPad. I think it would make a lot of sense there. Um the the problem is though that you, you say Apple makes their money on hardware. I doubt that that's true. I bet you Apple makes the majority of their money on the the app store. I mean, when it comes to the Mac OS, because I don't that's, know, I, that's I have a Mac. I never use the Mac the app store mm -hmm. on, on my iPad. I do <laughs> my iPhone. I do. Yeah, they make a lot of money from their app store. But you got you got the ecosystem tie in there, too. And I think I know why they open sourced it. Why is that? Because that way they can get somebody else to create the GUI it needs. <laughs> Yeah, but you know the way Mac works. Somebody else is going to come along and make that GUI, and they're going to look at it and go, "That's not the way we would have done it." And they would—they'll have this obsessive need to remake it in a beautiful but terrible way, like they've done with everything else inside of Mac OS. After uh, somebody else has already done the legwork. Yeah, yeah. Hey, it's Leo Laporte. I hope you've enjoyed this little clip from our programming at twit.tv. For more, visit our website, twit.tv, or subscribe in your favorite podcast client. There's also a link somewhere down there. <laughs>